very pleased to present to you the results which of the session which uh, was finished uh, half an hour ago. In this uh, session, we had uh, 13 FOF projects presenting their results. Some of these results are currently or will be exploited in the near future. Just to give you an impression about the nature of these uh, projects, they were selected under the topics of plug and produce components for adaptive control, towards zero defects manufacturing, cooperative machines and open architecture control systems, and robots for automation of post-production and other auxiliary processes. The aim of this session was to promote the interaction, networking among the projects, and facilitate contacts with the manufacturing community. In this session, we had as success stories two clustering initiatives, one at the national level and one at the European. In 2009, the Federal Ministry of Education and Research of Germany set up the research and development focus area, resource efficiency in production. This initiative resulted in 31 nationally funded projects, which are already completed. In order to promote dissemination and networking, a Fizien Fabrik was created. This is a joint collaboration between the ministry the German Engineering Federation, VDMA, and the Fraunhofer ISI. This collaboration was successful in bringing results and innovations to the market in areas such as machines for metal cutting manufacturing, aviation, energy, and ceramic production. Let me now turn to the second clustering example with the name for zero defects manufacturing. This initiative consists of four running FOF projects which started in late 2011. These projects are IFAGOM, with coordinator the Norwegian University NTNU, MUPROD with coordinator Technalia, MIDEMA with coordinator IK4 IDEGO, and MEGAFIT with coordinator Philips. These projects, thanks to their proactive coordinators, only a few months after their start in March, only a few months after they start, in March 2012, and with the encouragement by the European Commission, realized that by working together, they can create additional added value beyond the original scope of their respective projects by exploiting synergies and sharing best practice. As a first step, after getting the approval and support of their consortiums, they exchange their description of work and agree in participating jointly in dissemination activities. In fact, in this conference, the 4ZDM cluster has its own space in the exhibition area. They also have a dedicated website for the cluster. Since March 2012, the initiative is gaining momentum, and for some time now, based on the expertise of the four consortiums, they identified as their target sectors medical, transport, and energy. A lot of technical work has been done, and they are currently working on a definition of a common taxonomy and a system architecture for zero defects manufacturing. Once this work is consolidated, they want to hold an industrial workshop on zero defects manufacturing in 2014 in order to promote contacts that will reinforce potential impact within the four zero defect manufacturing cluster. They are currently working on a white paper to be presented at the next high-level group of Manufuture in November that will take place in Mannheim at the premises of John Deere. After these presentations, there was a lively discussion for about 40 minutes, and the discussion was centered around the IPR uh, issues, which are apparently something that they need to take care of. It was well noted by uh, the, the cluster, and also the it was a lot of emphasis how we're really going to get the results in the market and how to involve uh, industry. It was a very well participated session with about 150 people, and I'm uh, thankful for the people who participated and the presenters, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Neofito, for your report. I think that clustering activities can indeed provide added value in many cases and that uh, this is something that we should continue to promote uh, in the future. Uh, the next uh, 
speaker will be Professor Tullio Tolio, who is going to uh, report on the second workshop, uh, which was uh, dealing with uh, supply chains for customized products. So thank you, Chairman. Uh, we just finished this uh, session on supply chain for customized product. And uh, the first issue that uh, was discussed uh, among all the, the presenter and the attendee was that uh, supply chain for customized product is indeed a big challenge and uh, is uh, like going to the moon. Huh? It's very difficult. And this drives a lot of research. And this is uh, the, the main issue because driving the research in this way also has a lot of uh, products, byproducts that are directly applicable on the market before the overall idea can be completely created. So if we can go to the next slide. So the workshop, can you, oh, maybe I can do that. Okay. So the workshop itself was based on uh, two groups of products, projects. The first one was uh, more related to uh, the overall supply chain and how the different nodes cooperate in order to reach uh, the goal of uh, producing customized products. So we had uh, five projects in this area each addressing the overall problem, but also addressing specific technologies. So uh, on top of the result of having a uh, new organizational solution, new software to um, make uh, the companies cooperate, uh, these projects have been also able to produce uh, specific technologies that uh, can be already applied uh, to, to the market. So uh, just to tell some of them, uh, products, uh, uh, new processes uh, that are able to um, create 3D uh, textiles, new products, new processes that are good for uh, uh, dyeing uh, uh, leather uh, or to uh, print uh, some specific pattern on leather and, you know, many applications in these directions. So uh, this first set of projects set up uh, the scenario and then we had uh, uh, another group of projects that were more focused uh, on uh, specific processes uh, that can be used to customize products, uh, maybe can be used uh, to produce some components of a customized product, or uh, can be just enablers for uh, new customized products. And uh, you can read uh, uh, the list of other four projects that were presented in this direction. So overall, it was shown that uh, uh, customization is uh, uh, really uh, a complex uh, issue because it involves uh, both the product service system, so it is the product, the, the, the communication, and the services connected to the product. So the, pro the process uh, uh, then follows because if you have to do this product, you have also the process that is requi required, and this process has to be flexible enough to cope with all the variants, all the alternatives that you want to create for customer products. And then, clearly, the system and the network has to be able to, to satisfy this requirement. So as I said, it's a very complex thing because it's not just technological, it's not just organizational, it's combining all these things together. So it's a very, very demanding text. It's, a, it's kind of new paradigm where uh, Europe can play an important role. And um, so, uh, as I said, uh, there were many examples of new products that can, uh, can be uh, introduced in the market, especially products that fit for, uh, the, the specific characteristic of each person, like uh, shoes or uh, dresses. Uh, new processes, I mentioned some of them before, so I don't mention them again and uh, system and network uh, level activities, uh, how to combine different capabilities of different producers so that eventually you can create a complex product by combining the capabilities of all these producers. Uh, after the presentation, we had a 40 minutes discussion, very lively, uh, and we identified uh, from the existing projects and from the discussion some uh, key issues that need to be addressed for future activities, and uh, these are listed in, uh, in the structure of product, process, and system network. 
Uh, so for instance, for the product, the pro the one of the big problem is how to profile the real needs of the customer and also uh, how to deal with the virtualization of a product so that you can try the product before it is actually produced and also how to digitalize and make uh, all the information required uh, in a digital way. Uh, then you go to the process and you have a lot of, uh, again, uh, uh, activities that are still needed, like uh, the modeling uh, of the process, because if you change the process all the time, you need to do first uh, the first time, the, right the first time. So the, the idea is, okay, uh, if I have a new uh, product, in, it needs a specific process, and the process has to be done right the first time. So the modeling and digitalization of the processes is a really a, a key technology for, for this area. Also, the integration of uh, manufacturing execution system with uh, all the, man, the ERP of the, of the company is uh, very important because uh, products are unique and uh, uh, need to flow in the system in a very smooth way. Uh, clearly, there are all the issues of sustainability and uh, uh, applicability of these results to, to the market. So, uh, in the process area, there is a lot to do, and a lot of, has already been done, as uh, I presented before. Uh, regarding the system network, uh, the discussion pointed out that uh, there is a problem of creating these uh, uh, variable geometry networks, and uh, one of the issues is uh, how to guarantee the trust within this network since uh, the partners are changing and uh, uh, the products uh, have to flow through different paths uh, through the network. So uh, many solutions have been proposed uh, in the, and uh, some of them are very close to application to the market. So overall, I think that uh, uh, the discussion has shown that uh, there are a lot of results that are already applicable uh, and uh, these results, as in all good research, bring new questions, new ideas that can be uh, clearly developed in future activities. Thank you very much, Professor Torlio. <laughs> and it is very nice to see that in the area of customized products that there is already uh, a lot of uh, good results and that uh, there is big potential uh, to get even more in the near future. And uh, of course, we thank as well for uh, giving some more ideas of what uh, could be uh, important topics to address in the future in the framework of this uh, partnership uh, between the Commission and, and industry. And the next presentation, it will be for Professor Engelbert Westkamper, and he's going to talk to us about digital and smart uh, factories. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I would uh, like to give you a short report about uh, this uh, two hours uh, session, digital and uh, smart uh, factories. I know, of course, it is a very long and very, very big topic and only four selected projects have been discussed. Before we discuss this, I gave uh, a feedback to the visions we have in many future developed uh, for future development. And we think there are se several areas uh, to work on. One is the field of engineering for the digital products uh, to uh, represent the products in a full digital way in uh, computers. And we can do the same with factories. We see factories as very complex products. Factories are products. And factories in the digital form represented by all its objectives are linked with reality. And the questions, the main problems we have and the main objectives we have is the link between the digital world, the digital representation of products and manufacturing factories and shops with the reality. And for this reality, we need uh, a philosophy which is called smart factory. Smart factory is a factory which is uh, equipped with a lot of uh, electronic equipments, uh, so-called uh, sources, electronic sources, in machines or anywhere, which can be linked with computers and which uh, bring back uh, data from the reality to the uh, digital world and adapt it. And between all that, we need tools for the management of these factories. In the future perspectives, there are two areas which have to be uh, more in the, set more in the focus, uh, and this is uh, 
the relation to the turbulent environment around of manufacturing. Maybe the short uh, innovation, the innovations in products, we should do it in a digital environment in a very effective way. We learned this morning that we need engineers in the future. And maybe when we don't have the engineers, we should give the engineers the tools that they can do their work more productive. And this is what we call soft machines or maybe apps in, in expression. On the other side, the uh, administration in manufacturing should be reduced in its bureaucracy. We need changeable workflows, situation-based workflows. And even for people who are involved in that MRP and wherever, they need uh, flexibility in their operations. Combining both the digital products, the digital factories, following the products over their life, even the factory has a life from 10, 20 years or maybe more. Uh, it is a request for the data management uh, and uh, even for the tools and the efficiency of uh, our papers. There are threats in the future and we discussed some of them. One of the main threats in this digital world is the security of data. Uh, products data, technological data, the uh, data uh, selected in factories are uh, to protect. And we need in all this world uh, standards, maybe standards for data protection, especially for the manufacturing area. There's another aspect uh, very important that we try to develop the tools for the people who are working in factories and uh, which connect the workplace, whatever people and persons and humans are doing in factories every time and everywhere to support them with the necessary information, not more and no more, not less. Only the necessary information, reliable and trustable, so that uh, we can uh, support uh, collaborative work and uh, flexible work organization, flexible work systems, and maybe in the future to give support in changing and uh, changing workflow, changing operations by a kind of learning and training at workplace. Training, learning with methods and others at workplace. These are objectives of the future. So, and we discussed now four selected projects which have specific, specific uh, characteristics. One was the project plant cockpit a tool and a system for managing the operations on shop floor level to get data from everywhere. This is a direction I had in mind when we spoke about these visions, giving information anytime and everywhere based on the collected data of the factories. Uh, it can support, the system can support uh, different business and services. It is uh, to implement in industrial areas of automotive, machine industry, process industry, and many others, but it needs in each case an implementation, and it needs in each case the adaptation to the situation and the IT situation in companies. The second project, Comvantage, is a, a collaborative manufacturing network supported by ICT, which is an internet-based uh, system and it is uh, created for a world in which everything is mobile. The customers are mobile, the products are mobile, the services along this life cycle are mobile, the factories not yet, but maybe some factories can even make mobile in the future. Following that by internet and all operations and giving the support in a customer-driven area and the customers are the most, uh, uh, the factor which mo brings most turbulences in our factories when we individualize uh, our products. ARM PLM is a platform with a new ontology in the back which is oriented uh, to the life cycle management uh, with an ontology which is able to, distrib to support distributed engineering and supports collaboration and continuous workflow 
and the workflow of documents. Even a very important uh, infrastructure uh, element for the future development of ICT in manufacturing. Terrific. Terrific is a project which innovation is not visible on the first seeing. It is uh, oriented to modeling the data of products and to combine it, to bring more, more flexibility, more efficiency in the modeling of uh, technical and product uh, data, especially for the phase of analysis, analytics, finite element analytics, and others if, in, in, uh, in task which is uh, uh, necessary when uh, uh, the uh, products are uh, specialized, customized, and optimized uh, to high end. And uh, this uh, project uh, allows uh, that uh, the time to prepare this calculation on a mathematical based methodology can be reduced nearly, we estimate, more than half. The last project we had on the, our table was a, a manufacturing service system, a tool for supporting the service engineering phase to find out the services, the business, the relations to manufacturing along the life uh, cycle. These were our projects we discussed uh, and we saw some conclusions. First of all, the projects are not finished, but they are on a good way and we see a successful application in near future in manufacturing industries or in related manufacturing related services. They all reflect on actual topics, as I demonstrated, for this uh, customized manufacturing and engineering over the life cycle of products. We discussed uh, questions of standardization, but couldn't answer in this uh, short discussions where the right way is. Should we try to standardize more, or should we create more? and go a more a flexible way. The internet community doesn't like standards, only some. But uh, in uh, this world of industry, we have to, cre to, cre to find a way, a policy for standardization to uh, support industrial development. Critical success factors uh, of the future are, of course, uh, I mentioned security and trust. This IT generation allows to get information about details of our products and of our processes. And they have to be protected. They have to be protected, especially in small and medium companies. And they are very careful in the meantime in these discussions. And they think uh, all these clouds and others are critical when these security problems are not solved in a practical way in a practical way. And maybe that we need a European standard, maybe that we need a European initiative to do that. And we should do it in Europe because here is the relation between IT and technology the highest in the world. The highest in the world. We could do it and we must do it and we must protect our systems, our embedded electronics and our technical intelligence. This all does mean that we have to continue the ICT for manufacturing and I can conclude this field, as we discussed in Germany in a group, is a billion euro market. A billion euro market in the future. And we need much, much more initiatives and we need contributions which brings us to the positions with, as leading area in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Veskemper, for this very clear report on uh, Workshop 3, which was dealing with uh, digital and smart factories, and in particular for uh, telling us about the projects and the progress achieved uh, in those five projects presented, and in particular for highlighting the important role of ICT in uh, manufacturing. And now we are going to hear about the workshop number four, which uh, was dealing with another very important dimension of the factors of the future, the social and environmental sustainability. And uh, the report will be provided by uh, Mr. Uh, Johann Stare.
Thank you very much. Social sustainability for future manufacturing is a key to attract and help the skilled workforce. And the, the two, uh, or the three actually main topics on the EU 2020 chart is about employment and it's about sustainability. So this workshop was, was for us very important to see how we can in any way support this development. In 2020, McKinsey report suggests that we have, will have a workforce, total workforce in the, on the globe, about 3.5 billion people. And uh, there will be a shortage of 40 million uh, people with a college education. There will be a shortage of 45 million people with a secondary uh, education. And if you look at these figures on the chart, you see that the development in uh, the developed countries is not uh, very positive. So uh, I think it's very important to realize that the advanced manufacturing technology that we are discussing during st these days, we always assume that this will be handled by advanced people, well-educated people. But where are these people? So I think that it's very important for us to, to look into ways to, to achieve the sustainability that uh, brings these people to the workplaces. And on the other hand, the, um, it's well defined now that the IPCC uh, report says that the human is responsible for the, the global warming and in, in a sense, the development of the negative trends that you can see on all these curves. All the curves are pointing up. So the facts are already there um, and we need to do something about it. This is a recent uh, page from National Geographic magazine, and you can all see that w while Vilnius will make it, and uh, when all ice melts in a thousand years, there are a lot of you that will have difficulties in selling your, your uh, villas, because they will be underwater. So if we don't do something, we will be all, all be in trouble. And that, oops. So our workshop was actually about what we knew all these things already in 1977. And then what happened? We all knew all this in 1987, and then what happened? So the, the presentations in this workshop um, was short presentations followed by a very uh, engaged and, and interesting uh, discussion, group discussion. Uh, there were uh, projects dealing with uh, recycling, the, the problems dealing with micro uh, mechanics, there were problems dealing with energy harvesting, with maintenance, and, all, and there were also projects dealing with how to achieve a roadmap for social sustainability in, in manufacturing within Horizon 2020. I will think instead of going into each product, I will try to summarize some of the obstacles that we identified in the workshop during these uh, extensive uh, um, group discussions. One of the biggest obstacles that you meet as, as uh, someone who wants to propose uh, sustainability measures is that it will be more expensive. It doesn't have to be more expensive. In the long run, it, it needs to actually be less expensive in order to, to uh, achieve our goals. There is a suggestion for, instead of having a triple bottom line, or to, in addition to having a triple bottom line, you should have a triple top-down strategy. Instead of assessing, you should plan. There was a discussion on that most emerging technologies uh, based, uh, going th towards sustainable uh, manufacturing is actually uh, being hammered by companies as well as, as, well as policymakers. Uh, that may or may not be true in all cases, but there, the companies do have some difficulties in putting the sustainability KPIs into their balance sheets. The cost was uh, board brought forward, the cost of actually making things, making products, making systems, sustainability. We have the ideas, we don't have the time. That's another one. Can a product actually be developed without um, the sustainability measures taken into account? Well, some think they can. 
We have the technology, but there are endless consumer needs that drive us towards not being sustainable. We don't have the time to implement the same sustainability measures in our product development lines. And global competition stands in the way of sustainability. That is, that if you want to compete on a global market, you don't have the time or the uh, cost uh, possibilities to compete. There is an, uh, a low awareness on sustainability measures and also low awareness on the sustainability methods uh, in use to increase the sustainability of products and systems. There was some speaking about the policies that are not being enforced. Policies on sustainable uh, and uh, recyclable systems is not being enforced and that should be done by law if possible. Regarding the social sustainability, uh, there was a lot of discussion about how we are not aware of the life cycle, our workforce. We increase, we, we realize too late that the generation shift is needed in the companies. And we realize too late that the uh, experienced people just left going to a pension. So we need to have strategies uh, according to this top-down triple strategy in order to find out what is uh, needed for to, to maintain the workforce given the demographic problems that we see for, forward and also the strong interest from China and from India to actually import Europeans as their workforce in the future. So the projects are not finished. Uh, some of them just started. Uh, the dissemination of top of the results from the project were discussed in deep. Uh, it is uh, difficult sometimes because there are long time cycles for the products, uh, for, for the uh, results to actually penetrate. It's not the technology that you can buy off the shelf, it's actually a change of culture, a change of, of a strategy. So the overall impression and the engaged discussion that was, uh, was taking place ended up in uh, a collection of names for the survey that will be performed by the SoSmart project on social sustainability in manufacturing and uh, uh, to increase the stakeholder uh, group in that project. With that, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much, Professor Stare, for uh, this report on the projects uh, leading with the issue of sustainability, which is uh, also a part of our paradigm of the factors of the future. If we want to achieve uh, competitive and sustainable manufacturing, we should not disregard the challenge of uh, having sustainable manufacturing and uh, the progress of those projects is also very, very important. And then the report of the last workshop will be provided by uh, Ricardo Bueno from Tecnalia and the title of the workshop was Manufacturing as Enabler for the Integration of Technologies. Okay, Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I will uh, try to summarize the outcome of our very lively session we had. I would like to thank the five speakers in our session and, and the audience as well that uh, helped to have a very good debate during the session. Okay, so our session was about manufacturing as the enabler for the integration of technologies. And we had uh, interventions from different points of view uh, regarding this topic. The first one was uh, coming from uh, Hanish from Festo. We disca he described that what we need is uh, mostly an ena enabling environment. Uh, at the end, uh, it's not only the technology. At the end, it's uh, the main role of the environment uh, from the many point of view, different points of, points of view of having okay the people, the uh, the network, the ecosystem, the importance of it, and with another message as well about the role of the people, the role of the people in new industry in Europe, the, to make use of the intellectual capacity of the skills of, of the people. We had as well 
uh, Philip Gertz from Cecimon, and uh, it's been very clear that uh, if we want uh, to integrate technologies, at the end, the, the capacity to integrate, the capacity to bring uh, research uh, into products in, comes together with the manufacturing. Uh, and the capacity to be innovative is very much related to innovative. Uh, we see that, uh, he commented, there are new initiatives worldwide uh, bringing these uh, clusters, the uh, regional dimension, new institutes, new public partners, uh, public-private partnerships, and the importance of all this to be able to, to integrate technologies, always related to, to the capability to keep uh, manufacturing at home. Another different view, and very uh, also challenging, is the, uh, the one uh, that Augusta Pachi from CNR brought us about the importance of foresight. And I think tomorrow we'll have also a, a speaker about this, but we are in a very fast changing society. Uh, there is a trend towards a very high customization, aging society, environmental awareness. And at the end, uh, if we want uh, also to make standards that are relevant to industry and uh, that keep uh, also, uh, are also contributing to to, the, um, strength, uh, uh, to a strong industry in Europe, we need to be anticipate in these standards. And the way to anticipate is through foresight, uh, foresight activities. So the relevance of this. Then we had also Ms. Barricot, uh, who talked about the Stoicism project. It's higher than usual in this community in the value chain. It was about industrial minerals, the importance of uh, not only the final steps of product uh, manufacturing, but also the previous one, and how to, okay, to, uh, to make it better, how to integrate also new technologies at this stage. I think it's also a very fresh view of uh, enabling technologies also at higher or previous levels uh, of the value chain. And uh, Mr. Abele from CA, he commented us on two main aspects. One is the ongoing work in the KETS uh, high-level group with some recommendations, uh, some of them, okay, related to the supporting of pilot plants and so. Now, I mean, this group has been working for already for several years, mostly in the definition of uh, priority, in the uh, really selection of which are the main uh, or the key enabling technologies. Now we see that it, uh, the time of implementing this, the time of uh, making a follow-up of, of all those new ideas is, is coming. And then also we had a very interesting view on ICT for manufacturing, uh, very close to what we have just seen from Professor Vescamper as well about okay, the role of ICT in manufacturing to increase productivity with new interfaces, simulation, control. Okay, this uh, all, all new technologies. And after this, we had a very intense debate. Uh, we discussed about okay the uh, what the previous speakers have commented. And I will try to summarize the outcome of this discussion in three main conclusions, I would say. One is uh, the importance, uh, we talk a lot about enabling technologies, but previous to this is enabling environment. Um, uh, importance of the environment, the regional dimension, the location, the clusters, I mean, the overall environment uh, you need to, to be competitive globally to be uh, okay to to compete in manufacturing worldwide uh, we need some stable environment uh, to eliminate administrative burden and the role of the public administration as well uh, we see that it shouldn't be only to avoid problems but also to work positively and i think the for instance the instance so, uh, the example of the a public-private partnership, as we have uh, in the factories of the future, and so it's a good example of public and private cooperation. Then another conclusion would be, uh, okay, where are we integrating uh, those technologies? It's in the product, 
it's in the production. I think it's, at the end, we see that it's everywhere. I mean, from the materials that come with, okay, materi materials themselves, also with some uh, nanotechnologies and so coming there, to production equipment in the manufacturing that uh, integrates control materials, uh, many uh, technologies, and of course, uh, in the products them themselves. So all this, at the end, we have interdependent technologies, and we have to, okay, to deal, to deal with this in uh, an integrated way. And at the end, uh, there is, I mean, the environment, the technologies everywhere, and one of the, the third conclusion, I would say, is the, the human factor. I mean, if we are going to manufacture in Europe, we need the right people to do it. We need right people with the right skills at the shop floor. We need the engineers, the scientists that are able to develop new technologies and to integrate them. And we need also the businessmen with the courage to take, make decisions about new products and manufacturing also in Europe. So if we are able to combine right environment, a good science, a good technology, with the right people, this is how we see, uh, as a conclusion, the way to integrate technologies through manufacturing in Europe. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bueno, for this uh, very comprehensive report on the fifth workshop, which was dealing with the complex issue of the integration of technologies. And uh, this concludes the reports of all the workshops of the previous session, and I would like to request for all the reporters uh, a round of applause.